Hey everyone, it's Sarah with RegisterNurseRN.com and in this video I'm going to be going over how to check vital signs. What we're going to be doing is checking the six vital signs which are pain, oxygen saturation, temperature, heart rate, respirations, and blood pressure. And before you start, what you want to do is you want to perform hand hygiene and you want to provide privacy to the patient and tell them what you're going to be doing because you're going to have to touch them in order to do this. So let's get started. The very first thing we want to do is we want to ask them if they are in pain. So um, whenever you do that, you're going to have them rated on a scale of 0 to 10 with 0 being no pain at all and 10 being the worst pain they've ever had. Had. And if they do have pain, ask them the quality, what does it feel like, and where it is at. So, hi Ben, my name is Sarah and I am your nurse and I'm going to be getting your vital signs. Okay. And I perform hand hygiene and the very first thing I want to do is I want to ask you what your pain rating is. Are you having a, any pain? Rate it on a scale of 0 to 10. Yes, pain in my shoulder and it's a 3. Okay, and what does it feel like? It's just a sharp pain when I raise my arm. Okay, so you're having a pain of three and it's in your left arm and it's sharp. Yes. Okay, now I'm gonna get your temperature. There are several ways you can take a temperature. Every facility has a different system set up, so use what they have, but you can take it orally, you can take it axillary, you can take it tympanically in the ear, or you can take it temporally or rectally. Um, rectally is the preferred route usually on your pediatric patients, but in adult patients, Normally we do it orally. Some things to keep in mind though, axillary and temporally, the readings are gonna run about one degree lower than oral. And for tympanic and rectal temperatures, it's gonna usually run about one degree higher than your oral reading. So we are going to check this orally. And what we're gonna do, turn your thermometer on, make sure you're using the proper, um, sleeves if you have any sleeves for it, clean it, everything like that, follow your hospital protocols and have the patient lift up their tongue and put the probe underneath the tongue and have them close the mouth with the tongue over the probe. And hold it there until it beeps. A normal temperature is about 97 degrees Fahrenheit to 99 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, and take the thermometer out and read it, and his temperature is 98.2, and then clean it properly per hospital protocol. Now I'm going to take his oxygen saturation. Every system has different ways of how they measure it, um, different devices. This is a little portable device, and what you do is you put this on the nail bed of the finger. It has some red lights in there, and those red lights read through the nail bed, the oxygen saturation, a normal oxygen saturation, O2 sat, as you may hear, in the hospital setting is 95% to 100%. So let's see what his is. Um, put this on the index finger of the nail bed, and then just look for the reading. Okay, here you can see that his oxygen saturation is 98%. That is the reading on the top. It's read as SpO2. And then on the bottom, you will see his heart rate, which is 64. But here in a second, I'm going to show you how to actually count the heart rate using the radial artery. Okay, now we are going to count the heart rate and respirations. Generally, I like to do this together. Um, while I'm counting the heart rate, I count that for 30 seconds if it's regular, and then the next 30 seconds, I count the respirations, which I look at the rise and the fall of the chest, and that equals one breath. Um, generally, if you tell a patient you're gonna count their respirations, they change their rate of breathing. So it's good to conglomerate those two together so you can get a more accurate reading. So what we're gonna do is we're going to first count the heart rate and to do that you can use several different sites typically people use the radial which is right here right below the where the radius bone is and the groove right there or you can use the brachial artery which is in the bend of the arm where the antecubital fossa area is or you can use the carotid but here we're going to use the radial so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my two, I'm going to use my index finger and my middle finger don't use your thumb because you can feel a pulse in your thumb so use those two fingers and just put it over in the groove of where the styloid process is and the radial artery and fill that and count for 30 seconds if it's regular. If it's irregular, count for one minute and a normal pulse rate in an adult is 60 to 100 beats per minute.
Okay, the heart rate, I got 60 and his respirations were 16. Now we are going to get his blood pressure. Now, whenever you're getting a blood pressure, you wanna make sure that you get the right size cuff. In most settings, they have the automatic blood pressure cuffs where you don't have to blow it up yourself. So you're really blessed with that, but a lot of times you may have to learn how to do a manual one. Now, in my previous video, and a card should be popping up, I go over the two-step method if that's how you're being instructed. But in this video, we're gonna go over the one-step blood pressure of how to obtain it manually. So what we're gonna do, we are going to palpate the brachial artery. This is in the bend of the arm, and make sure you ask the patient which arm you can take their blood pressure in because you don't want to take it in uh, arms with if they've had blood clots or they have AV shunts, things like that. So you want to make sure you have the right arm. And what you're going to do is you're just going to have them extend the arm out and you're going to palpate the brachial artery. This is found in the antecubital fossa area and the bend of the arm towards this area. And um, extending the arm out helps that pulse really pop out at you and just feel that and we feel it about right here. Because what you're gonna do on your blood pressure cuff, you have these little arrows, and it says left arm, right arm, and this is his left arm, so we're gonna make sure that we put this arrow about one to two inches above that artery. So let's slide it up and then make sure our cuff fits properly. So we're putting that arrow about one to two inches above where I felt the brachial artery. And we're gonna just put this on here snugly. And to make sure you have the right blood pressure cuff, take about two fingers and slide it underneath the cuff and make sure it fits snugly, not too tight, not too loose. Because if you don't fit it correctly, you could get inaccurate blood pressures. Okay, so we have that there. And put your little spigomomanometer somewhere where you can see it, because that is where you're going to be finding your blood pressure. So put our stethoscope in our ears and you're going to use the diaphragm of your stethoscope. And you're just gonna place it over where you have heard that brachial artery. And then you're going to blow the cuff up to about 180 to 200 millimeters of mercury or until you don't hear that brachial artery anymore. Okay, we're blowing it up to about 200 millimeters of mercury. Okay, we're there. And now we're gonna let the needle drop about two to three millimeters of mercury slowly. Not too fast, not too slow and we're listening for that first sound. And that first sound will be our top number of our blood pressure, which is our systolic. So I haven't heard it yet, and I'll let you know whenever I hear it. Okay, I heard it at about the 114 mark. Now we're listening for whenever it stops, and whenever it stops, that's our diastolic. Okay, it stopped right at 65, so his blood pressure is 114 over 65. So that is how you check vital signs. Now, whenever you're done, remember to let the patient know what their vital signs were and um, do hand hygiene and clean your equipment before you go to the next patient. So be sure to check out all my other videos on nursing skills and thank you so much for watching.